good everybody, it's Pro Hamza, and today guys, I'm coming to you with a brand new video, but before we end that guys, please go ahead and leave a like on this video, let's try and get two likes on this video, we've been crushing our like goal of one, so I decided to get a little risky, let's bump up to two guys, and of course, subscribe if you have not already, today, I am coming to you guys with my deck profile, I came fourth at a tin tournament, I will explain everything into the deck profile guys, but of course, check out all the links down below, and without further ado, let's get right into the video. Alright guys, so now starting off with the deck profile, we are going to be starting off with our normal summons, so what is a Infernoble without the best normal summon of the deck, which is going to be our Neospace Connector, followed by our Neospatian Aqua Dolphin. Now again, I don't really think I need to be explaining these cards all too much, to be honest. Literally every single game where I saw Neospace Connector, I won. Whenever this card resolves successfully, I won as well. And um, opening additional extenders and seeing our opponent's hand, we know that like, okay, you know what? I got the draw out of his hand. What more can I push for? So there are a lot of lines where if you have Neo Space Connector and Aqua Dolphin on the board, and let's just say that this monster is like another monster here as well, what you can do is, and what I was doing a lot, is you could link the Aqua Dolphin and these monsters away here, like the extra monster, do your combo, and then use Connector to tribute herself off, himself off, to go ahead and summon our Aqua Dolphin, like so, and then you're able to continue playing from there. So it is really good. Um, and then I think the most I looped out of my opponent's hand was three, and you guys will see why. But in general, I'm always doing um, what I got to do, you feel me? So... We're just going to triple connector plus the aqua dolphin again very standard um kind of play um that the deck does so in terms of the normal summon neo space connector definitely takes it in terms of the best normal summon but then moving on to some more normal summons guys i am playing triple infernoble um knight Oge. now Oge is also really good um you guys can call him ogier i like call him Oge. um Oge is really good because again he's a, he's the armageddon knight of the deck he can go ahead and mill he can dump anything um but Oge is really good because there's a lot of um, unique and like cool little plays you can do with like one to two card combos or sorry not one card combos like two card combos like there's a really cool interaction where if you open connector and Oge, and the reason for that is connector can summon dolphin to get the additional monster and then dolphin can pitch Oge. and the benefit to that is we don't need to do the mill four play we just do the mill one and the mill one will be able to summon out richard Edo, and then richard Edo can go ahead and reborn Oge, and then Oge can dump so there's a lot of unique lines that you can do with Oge. so i feel like playing her or him sorry at three is very important as well um i do notice that people cut this down to two sometimes um you can definitely do that i just think personally i wouldn't do it um i wouldn't recommend it for any of you guys as well um just because you want to be able to open this card in your hand no matter what and that's why you play three of's because you want to see it but speaking of three of's in the deck i believe these are the last three of's i play it is going to be renaud now renaud is literally the reason why oga ticks and the reason why oga is so good and the reason why this deck is so crazy I don't understand why people are playing one of this card or even two of this card. It doesn't make any sense. I literally want to open this card. I want to be able to go through this card multiple times. For the majority of the time, if I don't continue my play with Renaud or start, start it with Renaud, for example, normal Oge Renaud, I'm literally going to try my best to get this card in my hand. Because what does this card do? Not only is it a special summon if you control Fire Warrior Monster, not only is it a level 1 tuner, which is really important in this deck, as you guys will see, but it also adds back a Banished Fire Warrior um, or Fire Warrior Monster in your graveyard or an Equip Spell. And that can be any sort of Equip Spell. It just doesn't have to be sort of... Um, what would you, you call it? It doesn't have to be the um, Infernoble Arms cards. It can be any of them. Or sorry, the Noble Arms cards. So that's why um, Renard is really good again. Like, please don't change this ratio. You can kind of cut this card out. You can move it if you want. You can just play this. Um, but personally, I just wouldn't even touch it. I would just rock it like this and keep it going, keep it flowing. So um, that's really important for the Ogier and the Renard. And then moving on to the other monsters, we go ahead and we play. So we're rocking double Infernoble Knight Oliver or Olivier. Um, Oliver's fine. Um, Oliver is okay. Like, man, this glitch, whatever. Yeah, there you go. So Oliver is okay. Um, in my opinion, um, oftentimes I would call myself siding out one, to be honest. And the reason for that is because I needed to see more non-engine cards and you just kind of only want one Oliver as like an extender or kind of push through, but you definitely do want to or need to when you're going first. And the reason for that is Oliver is an extender. He also has the unique ability that when he's equipped, you cannot target the monster he's equipped to. So that's pretty good um, in that regard. So that's why you need two in the deck. Um, you can play three, to be honest. It's just that like I wanted to make space for more cards and then try and stay at 40 to the best of my ability. So that's why I was just running um, Oliver at two. But again, to each their own. Um, but in my opinion, I think Oliver is just like a mainstay in the deck, of course. You can play two, you can play three. It's just that Renaud is just much better than Oliver. And for most parts, um, in my opinion, you'd be going um, ahead and grabbing um, Renaud in those scenarios. But moving on, we play the new card. So you play the one in for Noble Knight, Richard Detto. Now, if you do not know what Richard Detto does is he says when he's normal spell summon, target level four or lower fire warrior monster and then reborn it. Um, and then he can banish himself from the hand or graveyard and spell 
summon a level four lore fire warrior monster from your hand um and then treat it as a tuner which is a really unique effect because that's a that's an effect that you need um when you have to kind of push through boards going first um or sorry going second and then going first through multiple disruptions which i was doing a lot like this is important against caesar it baits caesar often like because people are kind of confused but then another new card we are playing the inf or new card we are playing the infer noble knight turpin now turpin is really good as well because not only is he a free special summon when he is equipped um you can treat the monster as a tuner so another way so you guys can see that we do have in our generic lines we have a lot of tuners um but post hand traps and like post side and when they stop his soul and stuff your hands get really weird so being able to have a monster considered as tuner is really important so Trippin fits um the bill in that regard and then we played the one malgus now malgus is really good of course i used to hate on this card but now that i know what this card is capable of it's crazy like so many times i was resolving malgus like within duels and matches like multiple times a duel like it was crazy like, so the first time um, i'm sure you guys saw the end board with my combos and if you didn't it'll be somewhere up here is when i would equip malgus during the end phase i would pop malgus afterwards and essentially what that means is it would just um allow me to shuffle these two cards back because you always want them in your deck or being able to get this card back in your hand so it's really important so things like that are the reason why i feel like malgus is really important note that he can only shuffle back um cards into the main deck not the extra deck and he shuffles his cost so it's really like weird the way you interact with him but he shuffles his cost can only shuffle into main deck he cannot shuffle extra deck monsters it sucks i wish he could shuffle extra deck monsters but he'd be even more broken in that regard but then that is it for the um, one Malgus. And then I'm playing this card. And personally, I'm really high on this card. It is Astolfo. Now, I personally am insanely high on Astolfo. And I'll explain it now. So, a lot of times, this deck feels like it's normal some reliant in a sense where you need the monsters. Astolfo being a free body. And that's the reason why I said that Oliver is at two. Um, Astolfo being a free body is really important. But he also has a really unique effect. So, he has two effects, right? The first effect is you can um, banish a fire warrior monster from your graveyard or from your hand, especially on himself, and then you can change level to the exact monster's level. Um, so basically, the reason why I'm saying that's important is a lot of the times I'll go like Astolfo, add Malgus to my hand, and then I'll keep playing like that. Let's say my um, Astolfo gets interrupted or my Astolfo gets interrupted. I can go ahead and search for the Astolfo. So now I have these two in my hand. And now if I have any of my level one extender tuners, so like let's say Oliver like this, this is a really unique um, instance because I can go Oliver effect and I can discard Malgus and I can special him to Oliver. So now let's just say I have a sold on board only, right? And then I can go ahead and use Astolfo to special Astolfo by banishing out my Malgus. And now I make Astolfo a level four. So now I have a level four Astolfo and a level one Oliver. And now this can go ahead and synchro into my Angelica. So my play just resolve um, even more and even further beyond um, imaginable. But again, Astolfo does have the other unique ability where he says that you can banish this card. Then during the second standby phase, you can reborn himself and any Fire Warrior monsters banished. So it doesn't have to be banished by this fact or whatever. So, um against labyrinth and grindier decks you can you'll probably be able to bring back like a charles or something so it's really good in that regard but again i'm really high on, on astolfo you guys let me know what you guys think about um the astolfo personally but i'm really high on astolfo i definitely think that it's worth to test um before you guys like draw your conclusions and then of course to round it out we play the one immortal phoenix gear free that glitter's killing me this card is crazy like this card is crazy i i literally think about bumping up to like two or three because this card provides so much pressure on the opponent because when you for example go like normal okay okay dumb special bernard bernard abag gear freed your opponent knows that okay not only does he have monster he has a free special summon like there's way too many things that immortal phoenix gear free does that like it, it's just so crazy like a boss monster you can attack there's a really cool interaction where i went um gear freed swing and then in the damage shop gear free can steal a monster but still attack a different monster so like say for example i had gear freed here my opponent has like x monster here and then y monster here i can go like battle phase gear freed swing here this of course is a face up monster so i can go gear freed swing in damage shop suck this monster and then kill this monster so it's it's a really important way on how we out monsters that are like non-targeting um removal non-targeting destruction removal so it is really good in that regard so i was thinking about maybe i could bump gear free up to two i i personally don't know what i would cut honestly but this deck just performed really well for me but um that's it for like the fire warrior engine or those guys and then of course you play the one fire flint lady because why not um, fire flint lady is literally really good um so again like i was saying before i will be doing a video on the hidden effects fire flint lady's hidden ability is like i would say top five like it's really crazy um a lot of the times people are kind of struggling when they're like what do i do when i have richard dead on my hand um for new people of course if, if you're well versed in infernoble you already know but basically fire flint lady has two effects one is if you control warrior monster special them now so she's the most generic extender she's really good in that regard but the second effect is you contribute her and then special summon a level four or lower warrior monster from your hand 
also so again secret ability but also it can't be targeted so there's i mean a cool interaction where like if you have richard Dedo in your hand and you don't really know what to do you special out fire flint lady by milling one tribute fire flint lady summon out richard Dedo, richard Dedo effect reborn so it's really good in that regard but that's it for the um main deck monsters guys and now moving on to the spells so the spells we're rocking triple heritage of the chalice heritage of the world chalice so again this card's really good um so this card can add a um noble knight monster i believe and a noble and or a noble arms card or not and or sorry just or a noble arms card from your deck or graveyard remember that from your deck or graveyard it's super hidden ability not a lot of people know because like a lot of people will go through your deck and be like oh he went through all of his equips he has nothing but this can get like all amazing it can get joyous from the graveyard um post milling so again it's really good and then it has a second hidden ability as well that one unfortunately did not come up for me but that um the effect is this i'm, I'm gonna read it word for word just because i don't want to mess it up for you guys but it says this if your noble knight monster equipped with a noble arms equip spell is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard while this card's in your graveyard add this card back so it's got a little niche recursion my only issue is um, the Noble Knight cards that are equipped with the crystals are always like super fat and juicy. So like it's hard for them to be destroyed by battle anyways. But then moving on, we play the one reinforcement of the army. I mean, it's Rota. Like what more can you ask for, right? So that's it for that. Rota, I was often often siding out post side because I feel like my opponent was almost always um, siding in droll against me. So I would take a Rota. Um, it was an easy side deck um, in that regard. But then moving on to more power spells, guys. And when I mean power, I mean literally ultimate He-Man type power. So we are playing triple noble arms museum a lot of people had to read this card to make sure if this card is once per turn or not it is not once per turn it is a soft once per turn not a hard once per turn meaning multiple copies can get you multiple cards so again i would go activate noble arms museum i'll go museum effect pay 12 they'd go unchained effect whatever trap card pop it i'm like cool activate second museum effect so you can keep on playing like that another thing is the second effect of this card which you must do the first one is to special summon so caesar cannot negate that because caesar says when a spell trap card is activated or monster effect that would summon a monster um or like or monster would be summoned or something like that it just can't negate spell trap card effect so it's really good because it cannot negate that so um triple noble arms museum no i'm not playing terraforming and the reason for it is the same reason why i said with rhoda is rhoda is really good because it can get you anything noble arms museum you kind of already need cards on the board in order to play um but for rhoda it's a little different but i also don't want to play into terraforming or sorry don't play into drone lockbird even though i know it's not being mained at currently i just don't want to play into it um you definitely can make space for um for terraforming if you want me personally i wouldn't but do you boo but moving on to the equip cells guys we are playing triple um infer noble arms during doll now this card is i mean need i say more for real this card is crazy so no this card can literally equip to any monster so equip to my opponent's monster my favorite thing to do when going second pop it and it has the ability that lets you search a fi level five or lower fire warrior monster this is crazy but the second effect is um so really similar to the other equip spells is if the equip monster is sent from the field to the graver while this card is equipped you can reborn a let me see if it has a limit you can target one level five or lower fire warrior monster um and special limit you can only use one effect and only once per turn um it is really good you're not really using this second effect unless you don't want to die but even then there are other ways to do it but that's it for the um durandal and then moving on from the durandal we are rocking the one joyous and the one all may so again these cards are really good let me move them down oh here the glitter's killing me so from here and here like this um so these are the other equip spells that we're playing in terms of noble arms so we're playing the one joyous which is the warrior returning alive lets you add a fire warrior when it's sent from the field to the graveyard while equipped to the monster and the monster is also sent to the graveyard you can go ahead and you can special summon out a fire warrior monster from your hand it doesn't have a level restriction so you can summon out um uh what's his face gear free so it's really good and then almost really good because this card can be any of these cards so it's really powerful in that regard and then moving on to the generic equips we're playing the one um different dimension um whatever this card is called ddr and then we are playing the one divine sword phoenix because like what is a deck without it the thing is usually people say the uh equips are breaks right durandal is not a break because this card's rewarded so now i have five million ways of searching cards that will literally own you and then on top of that we have the um all mace which is really good because it lets you swap and then we have the joyous which is really good because it lets you add back um it also is some from hand but now moving on guys so divine sword is is like insane i'm pretty sure like without a shadow of doubt everyone knows this card is like crack i'm probably gonna get banned um is are there ways around it yeah but like this card is just crazy but different ddr is like crazy so this is how i was saying that i was looping aqua dolphin multiple times so i mean this and this together in tandem is crazy um i can't believe i wasn't playing it before um i, I don't really know why i just didn't want to go above 40 i don't want to play multiple equips but now it just gets a lot better like ddr plus this is just crazy ddr can reboot anything so it's really powerful in that regard and then of course yeah so like i was saying the one ddr ddr enables a lot of hand loops it enables all sorts of shenanigans in that regard but then of course we are moving on to the go second card so you guys noticed that i wasn't playing any uh monster hand traps and i'll explain it right now so we're playing triple book of eclipse um 
we are playing double triple tactics talent we not get glared up and then we are playing triple infinite impermanence like this let me see if i can get this for you guys yep so these are my go second cards okay in my main deck so the reason why i decided not to play hand drops is again thrust is really powerful talents is really powerful as well i didn't want to play into that stuff but another reason is because Unchained doesn't really lose to hand traps, which does suck. So I didn't want to play any dead cards. I want all my cards to be live when I was um, drawing as my sixth card because I had faith in my engine being able to break it. Just the way that you sequence your cards, Infernope can break a lot of boards depending. Um, so being able to sequence properly and then using the goal second card is really powerful. Plus, I side additional hand traps as well. So that's why I decided to just rock it out like this. Um, Book for Eclipse was okay for me. Honestly, there were a lot of instances where I sided it out because I didn't really have like too much for it. But Book of Eclipse is okay. I think I might change it for book of moon but we'll see and then um talents is talents like maybe i want to play a third one like this card is cracked and then um imperm is imperm being able to be a six card and very generic um in that regard is like super insane so yeah like i was saying we got the imperms we got the talents we got whatever whatever so that's for the main deck guys i'm rocking a cool little 40 you feel me so whatever and then moving on to the um i guess i'll do side deck first so actually i'll do extra deck. so moving on to the extra deck, guys of course you need your good luck field center so what is a good luck field center without chusuke the mouse fighter so this is my um field center again um he, he's the best like what more do you want and then tokens for when i get nibbed because you know we're getting nibbed all the time so i got my tokens i always got my tokens um shout out zane truesdale shout out this guy shout out this guy you say you feel me so that's it for my tokens and then moving on to the extra deck again it's a super standard extra deck, guys there's not much in it so we're playing the um double link one so infer noble charles guy this guy's crazy bro like the fact okay, well he's not infer noble but the fact that this guy points down is a 3k monster can re-equip charles can be spammed with thing like this card's nuts i almost played a third one because of how good it was but i mean Again, I'm just going to chill on that. But we're playing the uh, double link one. We play the double is sold. Now, two is sold. Again, like I always say, it's always mandatory. The reason for that is there are a lot of instances where your opponent will imperm. Um, a funny interaction came up where I summoned is sold against rescue ace player. He had to moonlit chill my is sold um, because you can't really moonlit chill in response. And that, that was the only hand trap in his hand. So when he um, moonlit chilled my first one, I could still go ahead and make the secondary is sold and just full combo through there. And because I connected, um, I saw his hand. I knew what he was up against. Um, I didn't really like, you know what I mean? So it's sold to a sold mandatory please don't cut this card man like even back when warriors was like trending upwards and going crazy like i don't know why people only play one just play two don't, don't make the come on man don't don't make the mistakes bro then the one uh, fiery flame swordsman guy of like powerfulness or whatever this card's name is first flame swordsman um he's really good never came up for me um he is really important because you need to out the ability lock and he's the specific reason why you do it um alternatively he it works really well um in order to out like really struggling big monsters because you can go assault and another monster into him then you have the other cards giving a 500 as well so even if your opponent like for example my opponent like um even if your opponent like dark rulers your board or like nukes your board he still gets the buff and then he also has the floating effect where he says this right here if this thing summon card is destroyed by a battle or by a card effect while it's in the owner's monster zone track one non-link warrior monster in your graveyard and special in it but banish it when it leaves the field so he's really good in terms of, like follow-up play as well um being able to summon him and crash like it never came up but i would definitely play this card like no way you cut this card like absolutely no way then we are moving on to Raten. Bro, this card was literally my boss monster. I wish he had a full brain. This guy is so cool. Not only does he let you, like, is he crazy, but at the start of battle phase, he pops card. So he applies a lot of pressure on, like, Fenrir decks and things like that. Because when you have this and your opponent special summons a Fenrir, they want to enter battle phase to out a card, right? Like, with Fenrir, for example. But as soon as they enter battle phase, you can go ahead and use Retain and go psh, and just shoot him. So he's really good. Um, And then going into, like, um like games two, uh, not games, sorry. Like, uh, turn two and three and four, he gets a lot better. Um, and then he can summon cards from hand. Um, It never came up for me personally, but... He's really good. I made this card literally every single duel. This guy is absolutely crazy. And then another reason why Retain is crazy is this guy right here. Goki, the Power Load Ogre. So something really important about this guy that you guys need to know is Power Load Ogre specifically says this. Um, he says that you contribute a Goki Link monster, target cards on the field, up to its Link rating and destroy them. So just remember that, guys, because you have to attribute a Goki Link monster and attribute its cost. So that's how you get under skill drain. But you have to target four cards on the field and destroy them. Meaning that if your opponent has two or three cards, you have to target one of your own cards. So that's why it's important to get like a divine sword. Like for example, I played against a branded guy. He had three monsters on board. He had like um uh this being Lulu Wallace or whatever. Um and I couldn't commit to my board because I didn't want him to negate my my monster that I was summoned. We 
we're in a very simplified game state. So I used Raten, Raten climbed into Powerload Ogre, and then I used Powerload Ogre's effect to tribute, and I had to pop my own Divine Sword, so it was important because I needed four. So I popped his three, my own Divine Sword, and I was able to be all gravy baby from there. So Powerload Ogre is really good. Um, he's a boss monster. He's really funny. And then a newest addition to my deck is Appaloosa. So I'm sure you guys saw from DDR. Shout out to Ben for giving me this. Also shout out to Hussein for lending me like the entire deck. Um, but yeah, Appaloosa is really good um, in this regard. It sucks because you do get warrior lock sometimes. I was warrior locked once and I attempted to make this. My opponent called me out on it, luckily, so I didn't cheat. Um, but yeah, you do get warrior locked um, by like Richard Dedo, I believe. So it's important to note that. But this card's really good, especially with DDR. It makes the plays a lot better. I'm, I'm not sure if you guys know. Um, I believe his name is Team COG. He uploaded a video where um, you go normal sun and space connector. Um, and if you have Renaud, you can go ahead and make an Appaloosa and continue playing from there. So it's really important to play an Appaloosa, um, especially because post side and cards like Rattan, you have easy ways to climbing into Appaloosa as well. So it is really good. Um, there was one instance where like I connected, saw my opponent's hand and saw that he had Super Poly. So I looped his cards. Um, it was a branded player. And then I ended up making Appaloosa and I had like Appaloosa um, with um, Charles Link under. So it was like a two, two to three monster negates plus the Charles Link, which is spell and trap negate, which is like enough, honestly. So being able to change your play style is really important with this deck. And then again, against Unchained, this card is really good going second. Um, so there is that. Um, so then that's it for the link monsters. And then the XYZ I'm playing, guys, is Dempsey. It's not Artorgius. The reason for it is I felt like Artorgius was like forcing me to not play with Durandal if I already had it, for example. Because Artorius is, like, he has the whole thing where, like, it's Joyous, it's Durandal, has to be those two no matter what. But with Dempsey, Dempsey can do anything. Um, a funny thing about Dempsey, and, like, make sure you guys know this, is against Rescue Ace, banish this guy. Please banish this guy. Because if they heat us, summon back uh, Dempsey, Dempsey can grab a Hydrant or whatever. So it's important to just, like, watch out for that. But, again, Dempsey's really good. I'm going to be playing Dempsey moving forward. My mind is set on Dempsey over Artorgius. Artorgius is really good. Um, if you do play Zeus and things of that nature, it definitely gets better. But that's it for what I'm rocking, which is Dempsey. And then we played the one roll-in. I was on two for a little bit, but I realized that two doesn't really come up too, too much. Um, Angelica is always just, like, there anyways, and it's optional. So... Um, Roland is really good on um, the five tuner and their ways of recurring it the issue is though honestly is that you cannot summon this um, Roland because you cheated out so that's the only thing that came up but I mean, it doesn't really matter and then Angelica one of the most beautiful cards I've ever seen in my life the artwork is so crazy bro but also this card is insane like going first being able to grab your museum and just keep playing and then going second into big boards it's absolutely nuts so double Angelica and then we are playing double um infernoble knight charles it didn't come up for me because my games didn't get too grindy um but the theory is there alternatively you can just cut this card but personally i feel like i just rather have it than not so um charles is really good in that regard um the side like not side sorry the post like grind game is really important so it comes up in my opinion the second roland does come up more than the second charles but if you do play the second roland you do need to play the second charles so there you go. And then the final card, which is Baron, which for some reason a warrior works with all your monsters. There's a lot of like funny little interactions and things like that. But that's it for my deck profile, guys. If you guys have any questions, um, anything like that, I will be, again, like I said, for always answering the comments and things of that nature, guys. But yeah. So guys, that was it for my video. If you guys liked the video, please go and leave a like on this video so I know that you guys like it. If you want to see more IRL deck profiles, tourney reports, maybe even live duels at my tourneys and at my locals, please let me know, guys. And of course, my name is Hamza. I always say, keep on shining and never go on your jeans. Peace. <laughs>